Hi, it's Brennan Gaffney here, and I want to introduce you to my new tool, uh, the Cabinet Makers Sector. Uh, this is a revival of a 16th century to 18th century uh, tool used in layout. Um, and we can do some physical math coupled with a set of dividers or drafting tools uh, to do basically some physical arithmetic, some drawing exercises. Uh, a number of things. Uh, you'll see uh, some other people have written about these. Uh, George Walker and Jim Tulpin and their By Hand and Eye books uh, did a lot to promote and raise awareness of this type of tool as well as proportional layout which it dovetails nicely into. Um, this tool in particular uh, I call it the cabinet maker sector versus uh, what would have been called a sector a number of years ago because it's been scaled up in size uh, is really scaled towards the cabinet maker's size or furniture maker's size. Uh, something that will be useful to people outside of simply drafting, uh, though it can still do the finer work. Uh, you'll notice the tool is made of hard maple, uh, quarter sawn, uh, very, very tight grain, nice hard stuff. Uh, it's got a brass hinge with a tool steel pin that's been riveted. Uh, and you'll see it's been inlaid, slotted in, and riveted through the wood. Um, the inside of the sector, which opens up across that hinge, you'll notice there are mortises and registration tabs. Those keep the tool from racking while being stored, uh, and also keep it from warping uh, while it's in storage through climate change or something like that. So if it gets very humid or very dry, the tool will stay in good condition and this, the two leaves will not warp against each other. Uh, you'll notice the face of it has a number of markings that have been hand stamped and hand inked uh, along with small holes that correspond to those markings uh, which themselves are inlaid with small brass cups uh, and that's to prevent wear in usage which I'll teach you a little more about in just a little bit. Uh, some other notes about the tool you'll see on the back my logo Bernhardt is stamped on one side along with the edition number. The editions are numbered the first number is the number of the edition so this is number 101. So this is the first sector of the first edition. Uh, some other things to note about the tool. Uh, it's used in concert with dividers. Uh, I've got a number of dividers here. There's a couple of things I like and dislike about different dividers, especially in relation to this tool. Um, I like dividers, especially when drafting or working with finer measurements, uh, that have a micro adjust, which you can see these two do. Uh, this one doesn't, but I've also got some uses for uh, some non-adjustable dividers that I'm going to show in a little bit. Um, so there are three lines that are on the surface of this tool, and they're in three different distinct colors. Uh, the red line is the line of circles, uh, and you'll see it's labeled C, D, and R. We're going to use that to get radius, diameter, and circumference uh, from given any one of the three. Uh, there's a line of lines, which is this black line. And we're going to use that to multiply and divide and read proportional uh, ratios off of a physical measurement taken with the divider. Uh, and then we've got a blue line here, which is the line of polygons. Uh, and we're going to use that to draw regularly sided polygons, uh, given the radius of the circle. Uh, so stay tuned, and we're going to read a little more into just how this tool is used. So now to start in on the primary use of the tool, which is deriving proportional ratios from physical measurements using a set of dividers. And for that we're going to go to the line of lines. So let me get a nice board here. Uh, here we've got a nice clean board we can mark up. So, common task in woodworking is to give myself uh, certain divisions of a known distance. So old ways might have been to take your ruler come in and measure this face and then divide it up into whatever you need. Now getting into fractional math gets a little hairy but I can see that this one is 8 and 3 sixteenths and a little bit and that's all fine and well if it easily divides but 8 and 3 sixteenths not going to be terribly easy to divide into much. Um, so instead what we're going to do here is we're going to do some actual physical measurement and ratio layout. So now I'm going to take my square 
and I'm going to use that square to draw myself a square line from one edge. And that's going to be the line that I'm going to draw these ratios out on. So let's strike ourselves a line. Now I'm going to be marking with a marker so that you can see the line I mark. But of course you can use a scratch all or any other marking tool uh, fit for the situation. So now I've got a nice square line there on my board and I want to divide this board let's say into fourths. So that may be because I want to locate a drawer pull at one quarter the distance from the top. Maybe because I want to cut this board into fourths or I'm laying out banding so on and so forth. So first things first we need to start getting our physical measurements on and we're going to do that with our divider. So I'm going to take my divider and open it up to the width of that board. Now here's where I like that micro adjust. I'm using one finger to keep it on the edge on the other side and on the far side for me I'm using the micro adjust to really dial in that width just dead on. Now there's a couple of people Walkmore have put out an edge guide that would be wonderful use in this instance. Um, but I've had some time to grow and use these tools so I'm going to stick to my dividers and just eyeing it. So I want to divide that distance in four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the sector up and I'm going to set my divider points into corresponding holes on the line of lines. Now I could set it in the four and the four and read from the one and the one but instead here I'm going to read from the eight and the eight because it doesn't require me to open my sector up as much. It's going to make it a little more manageable to work with on a smaller bench top or to keep it on frame for the camera here. So here, one leg, what I'm doing is firmly planting it and you can feel they've got these little brass cups that really catch and hold the leg. And now I'm coming over to the other side to the other corresponding eight measurement here. And I'm just going to open and adjust and I'm basically planting with some force down through this leg to keep one side of the sector from moving and just opening or closing that sector until we're dead on the money for the other side of that leg. So now I'm really firmly planted in those two holes. And without moving the sector now, I'm going to pull up my dividers, loosen them, and read between the two and the two here. And that's going to give me my one quarter relationship that I'm looking for. Obviously two into eight is the same as one into four. So I've again I've taken, I've loosened the sector, planted one foot of the divider firmly, and the other side, because the sector is loose, is just going to sit in the corresponding hole, also labeled two on the other side of the sector, and I'm tightening the sector with or the dividers with the, my free thumb there. And now what I can do is I'm going to close up the sector here, and I can step out those measurements. Uh, if you're familiar with walking divider measurements out in the past, you know that part of the reason I've got that square line there is so that I don't walk a little drunkenly accidentally. And I've really nailed it right off the bat. There's no guesses, there's no adjusting. Now, every time I walk this out, any error I have is multiplied. So if I'm walking at a distance I've taken off the sector, if I'm walking it out, let's say, eight times, I'm going to multiply whatever error I've taken here eight times over, which means on occasion your divider may overshoot or undershoot the distance here a little bit. And again, that's where I like that micro adjust. Just give it a small turn one way or the other to adjust and rewalk. Uh, so I'm going to now walk with some purpose here and put a little force down onto the legs of the dividers to make myself some more notable marks. And I'm going to come through and darken them so that you guys can see them there on the video. But there are my four quarter marks. Now I can also, of course, multiply lengths, similar fashion. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is, I've got a measurement of four here, but let's say I want to take that one quarter measurement I just made and multiply it by three and put it on another board or step off another three measurements somewhere else. Now I could simply reset my divider here to span the distance three quarters across the board, but let's say I don't have the board anymore or only know the measurement or I'm starting with that smaller measurement. Now to multiply length, similar fashion, but instead we're going to set to the numerator instead of the denominator, meaning to the smaller number to be multiplied and sampled from the larger number on down the sector. 
So I'm going to multiply this length by 3. Again, I can go to the 1 and the 1 and take it from the 3 and the 3, but because I like to keep the sector relatively closed, it makes it a little easier to work with. Here I'm going to just take from the 3 and the 3. So again, planting one foot firmly on one side, opening the sector until the other side is just right. And I'm going to sample now from the 9 and the 9, if I want to triple that measurement I've taken. So, going from 1, 9, and I'm going to hold the sector down so it doesn't move. And of course I'm working on a narrow surface, but working on a bench top uh, and a large flat surface is going to be best. And I'm taking from the 9 and the 9 there. And now I've tripled that distance, which of course I can check here. And we're right on. So that's a basic use of the line of lines. Alright, so now I want to work a little bit with the line of circles and the line of polygons. And let's start with the line of circles first. So the line of circles here on our sectors is the red line, and you'll see it's marked R, D, and C for radius, diameter, and circumference. So given any one of those measurements, we can derive the other two. Uh, in the case of radius to diameter, that's just multiplying by two, but in the case of circumference, well circumference is two times pi times the radius, or just pi times the diameter. That's not terribly hard math to do, but in the case of not having a, a calculator on hand or a fractional calculator or only being, to work, being able to work with physical measurements, we're going to make it a lot easier for ourselves. So if I know my radius of a circle, and here I'll draw it now, is this given distance, which I'm not measuring. I'm scribing this circle with the edges of, with the legs of my divider. You can of course use a compass with pencil lead on one foot, but I'm perfectly happy here just to scribe it. It may not be terribly visible, but I can see that circle now. And if I needed to know the circumference of that circle, let's say I'm wrapping banding or veneer around that circle, uh, or if I'm turning and want to know the length around that for some further details or inlay details, uh, now I've got the radius stored on my, di uh, my dividers. I'm going to open up the sector until the R and the R meet at the ends of that divider. Just like that. And now I can sample the circumference down here between these two points. Now those two points are going to be just within reach of my dividers here. But of course if I want to, or need to relay these measurements to someone else, well that's what measuring's for. So I can come in with a ruler and just simply set zero to one hole and read the measurement off from the other side. So here the circumference of that circle comes out to 12 and 3 eighths. And that's going to be a lot easier than going in trying to do fractional math with pi. So we've also got the line of polygons here. The line of polygons, which is the blue line, the innermost line, allows us to draw regularly sided polygons just using a set of dividers in the sector. If you've ever tried to do that before, if you've done inlay, chip carving, uh, something like that, rosettes and guitars, uh, any number of reasons you can find to divide a circle up into a polygon, you know that that math can be a little ugly. But here I'm going to take that I'm going to reset my divider so that circle I drew earlier, and there it is, still right on that circle. And now I want to take that radius and I'm going to draw a seven-sided shape on that circle I've scribed here. Well, that math is not going to be terribly fun, but there's a geometric truth that's going to help us along here and help us use the sector to find that heptagon, that seven-sided shape. Uh, and that geometric truth is that the radius of a circle is the same as the length of, a su of the sides that fit within that circle. So a hexagon size, the length of its sides, are the same as the radius of the circle that encompasses it. And what that lets us do is register the sector once we know the radius. So what I'm going to do is on this innermost line, on the line of polygons, the blue line, I'm going to open up my sector here and put my dividers between the 6 and the 6, meaning the 6-sided shape. And now that that sector is open to that correct amount, we can now sample 
any of these other lengths from it to draw the sided polygons. Now, it's got 4 through 12, but of course if I need 48 sides, or 72 sides, or 14 sides, I'll take one of these and multiply or divide those using the line of lines. But I'm going to draw my seven-sided shape here. So I've loosened my calipers now, or my dividers now, and I'm going to come in here and read the seven and the seven. And those little brass cups that are laid out within those lines make it really easy to feel when you've definitely registered those two marks. Now that I've firmly got the divider in those two holes, I'm going to tighten it. And I'm going to come back here and start at some fixed point. So I'm going to mark a point here that I'm going to start walk my walk out on. And we'll see if we can come back around in seven steps. So there we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And there we are, winding up right back at the original spot. So I'm going to do that walk again, but this time I'm going to push a little harder on my divider points so that I get really registrable vertices that I can use to draw or mark the circle further. Uh, now, if you do have an error, the sector slips, your dividers weren't set perfectly or they were knocked in use, you can always use a micro adjust or a light wrapping to tamp the end of one of the dividers to adjust for that overcorrection. Your error is multiplied with every step you take. So with a seven sided shape, if I wind up about an eighth of an inch, I need to adjust that to one seventh of that distance. And that's really just done by eye and a trial and error of stepping. But the wonderful thing about the sector is we're going to get dead on or very close to dead on very quickly with very little guess and check. Now that I've darkened those vertices, I'm just going to come in really quickly and draw out the size of our new heptagon here. And there's our last seventh side. So there's our seven-sided heptagon, which was described by the radius we drew earlier. And if you've done the math behind that before, you know that it's not a particularly fun shape to draw. So, here's a basic tutorial on the line of polygons. So that's the Cabinet Maker Sector, which is my new tool from uh, Bernhardt. Uh, if you're interested, uh, the first edition is sold out, but I'm going to be making more in the future. Uh, you can find out more about that on my website, burn-hart.com. Uh, I've got a mailing list on there, which I send news about new inventory, stock, new products, new projects. Um, and you can follow me on Instagram, uh, at bernhartmade. That's B-U-R-N. H-E-A-R-T, made. Um, I'm really proud of these tools, and I'm excited to see uh, what you folks can dream up in using them. So thank you very much.